you're looking to come to Prime, want to get your CDL, have my videos played a part and you want to get your CDL, put me down as a referral. Driver code Maturo, M-A-T-U-R-O. Also list Nikki Yost. Hi guys, I'm a recruiter here at Prime. I've been working alongside Junior for several years. Um, if you would like to come to Prime, we would love if you would list his code and me as your recruiter. We would love to get you in here. Thank if you. you have any questions, give her a call at 417-521-3598. Thank you guys. All right, guys, we're now going to do the end cap portion of the pre-trip inspection. But before you start, you have to make sure that the wheels are chalked. It's important that you chalk your wheels before you begin. And also make sure that the lights are on. Before you begin, always make sure that these valves are popped out. Okay, right now I'm going to start with my seatbelt. Make sure it's probably mine is secure. It's not ripped or frayed, adjust this and it latches properly. I'm gonna look at my fire extinguisher, which is right below the uh, the driver's seat. Fire extinguisher, make sure it's properly mounted and secured. It's fully charged. My three red reflective triangles are underneath my bunk. My spare electrical fuses are in the glove box. I will now perform my safe start. When performing the safe start, make sure that the vehicle is in neutral. Both valves are popped out. Turn the key on. You're going to tell them that the ABS is working properly because the ABS light came on and off. Turn it over. As soon as you turn it over, you want to release both valves. This will give you ample time to build the pressure up for whenever you go to the air brake check. City horn, air horn. I will not talk about my indicator lights. Left turn signal, right turn signal, high beams you want to point to it and then my four ways I am not going to talk about my oil pressure gauge make sure the oil pressure is rising to normal operating range my water temperature gauge rising to normal operating range my voltmeter my alternator is charging between 13 and 14 volts. My air pressure gauges. Air pressure should build to the governor cut between 120 and 140 PSI. I am now going to talk about my heater and defroster. So you're going to turn it over here. Turn the heat all the way over. Put it on high. You're gonna check the front, make sure it's blowing. Check the bottom, make sure it's blowing. It's working properly. Put it back over here. I will not talk about my windshield and mirrors. My windshield is properly mounted secured, not cracked, been broken, free of any obstructions. My mirrors are clean and adjusted to me. Now I'm going to demonstrate the windshield washer and wipers. So you want to demonstrate it. My wipers are properly mounted secured, operate smoothly. 
my wiper blades are not cracked or dry rotten. Okay, after you finish with the end cab, you are now going to begin with the air brake test stage one, applied pressure test. You're gonna tell the examiner, I will not perform my applied pressure test. You're gonna set up for that by turning it off, putting it back on the on position. I am going to fully depress the brake and wait for my gauges to stabilize. You wanna make sure you point to the gauges. I will be checking to make sure I don't lose more than four PSI in one minute while listening for air leaks. Will you assist me in timing me for one minute and I will tell you when to start. So at this point you wanna perform what you told them you were gonna do and then once the gauges stabilize, then you wanna tell the examiner to start timing you. You're going to fully depress on the brake. You're going to wait for the gauges to stabilize. Then you're going to tell the examiner, you can start timing me now. After the minute has passed, the examiner will tell you, you are done. Take your foot off the brake and you're going to say, I did not lose more than 4 PSI while listening for air leaks. Air brake stage 2. Pump down to warning light and buzzard. You're going to tell the examiner, I will now pump down on the brake pedal until the warning light and buzzer come on at or before 60 PSI. Then you're going to proceed to pump down on the brake pedal. Warning light and buzzer came on. Air brake test stage three. Pump down until the tractor protection valves pop out. I'm gonna pump down on the brake pedal until both the tractor protection valve and the park brake valve pop out between 40 to 20 PSI. You're gonna continue to pump down on the brake and these valves will pop out. Do not touch them. They both popped out. And you can tell they popped out. That completes my air brake check. After the valves pop out, remember, do not touch them. You now will turn the truck back on. Turn the steering wheel to the left, to the right so that it loosens up the chocks outside. We're gonna step out, remove them, and continue to the next part. After removing your chocks, that should give you ample time to let the pressure build up and move on to the next phase of the brake check. Before you begin, always make sure that these valves are popped out. We are now going to do the parking brake check. We're gonna check the brakes for each, the tractor and the trailer. We're gonna start by doing the trailer. Put your foot on the brake, release the tractor, put it on drive, And then we're gonna tug against the trailer and check the brake. All right, stop. We are now going to check the tractor. Pull the tractor, release the trailer. We're now gonna tug against the tractor. All right. Pull the trailer back out. Put it in neutral. Now I am going to perform my service brake check. 
I will pull forward at five miles per hour, apply the service brake, and make sure it doesn't pull to the left or to the right. All right, so put our foot on the brake, release both valves, put it on drive, and then we're gonna pull forward at five miles per hour. After pulling forward at five miles per hour and applying the service brake, you're gonna park it, pull both out, neutral, and you're gonna say, the truck did not pull to the left or to the right. Okay.